So y'all, we had an opportunity to go on an incredible trip. Mm -hmm. um, Selma to Montgomery, mm -hmm. an alliance trip with the ACC, Pac-12 and the Big Ten. And I was really excited yes. about this trip before going. Just the reality that we were gonna be able to walk through the history and see um, the events that occurred from Selma to Montgomery, the march, learn about different prominent figures. Mm -hmm. And I was ready. I, I was like, I don't know about y'all, but I was like, man, I cannot wait until this trip happens. <laughs> what about y'all? As we were preparing for the trip and as y'all were thinking about what it was gonna be about, what were some of your initial thoughts before we got a chance to go? Of course. So I know me, I was looking forward to the trip, but I just didn't know what I was looking forward to. Mm. Like I had no expectations, but I could say like what I experienced, it blew my mind. Like it was way more than I thought was gonna happen. I met so many new people. I learned about so many untold truths mm -hmm. that my ancestors and my people had to experience. So, definitely. yeah. Yeah, definitely. D-Mac, what about you? Uh, I got, I told somebody on the trip, um, I came in sixth grade. Uh, it was kind of cloudy, just just being so young, you know what I'm saying? You, you got to go on a field trip. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wasn't, I really wasn't there at the time. So like, I wanted to come back. And so I really experienced everything that I wanted to experience. I mean. The friendships I built, the connections I got to, uh, got to connect with, um, what else? Uh, just as well as just, just I, I knew what I was walking into just because you know the history of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Alabama has ugly secrets, you feel me? And so I, I, um, I really got everything that I expected out of the trip. Cool, cool, cool. So these are some good feelings that you guys are feeling before the trip, mm -hmm. not not knowing what to expect mm -hmm. potentially, you know, in the reality of having some context and history behind it and mm -hmm. going into it. So we get there, we land, you know, plane, plane lands, we finally get there. Uh, we're hopping onto a bus, you know, with a, a lot of other students, a lot of other administrators, and we're talking about the trip and what, what's going to happen. And night one, um, we're able to hear from Cheyenne Christ, uh, wow. Webb Christberg. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, being able to hear hear from her, you know, my perspective, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. And I was really just in a place where I feel like I didn't know what to express or what to feel hearing her story and her experience. And being a seven year old, mm -hmm. sitting on the lap of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. and being able to see that and experience that and being able to even march, you know, she was rebellious. I don't know about so, that. Yeah. She, she, so she, young, she, she so was, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She, was, she was a rebel, yeah. but a rebel with a cause, right? Yeah. You know, and we, we learned a lot about it. I think Brian Stevenson touched on it, but he talked about the pain and the progress. Mm -hmm. So as you were hearing her speak, as you were um, hearing these other administrators, the mayor, different commissioners a part of Alabama. What was going through your mind in preparation for what we were planning for? We were getting ready to cross the bridge that next day and then go visit the church. What were some of the thoughts in your mind as you were hearing her talk or seeing her? Well, uh, Cheyenne Chrysler, she she uh, she was a very important figure in, in that movement, uh, being the youngest, being the youngest person ever to, uh, to march with them. Mm. Uh, I, I came back and I told the coaches, I, I learned new leadership tactics. Mm. Uh, I mean, just, just hearing the story about how she met Dr. King and running up on running up on the car, and uh, they were playing outside. Her and the little girls were playing outside. They ran up on the car, mm. met Dr. King. Uh, they were about to go back outside and play, and he told them, "No, come inside. Come sit down." Yeah. And so him him grasping the youth and grabbing the youth and letting the youth know this is a movement for you all. You feel me? This is a movement for young people. Mm -hmm. I took that to heart. You feel me? Yeah. Come back teaching the young guys. I mean, I'm always around them already but it, it just made me it just confirmed my decision of being around those guys you know what I mean? like being being young doesn't mean you can't you can't have a, a, a heart for change yeah that's true yeah that's true so, yeah. that doesn't mean that, that you can't have a heart for change but also it doesn't mean that you can't start a movement mm. and i think we i think we talked a lot about that you know the reality of an event in, in conjunction to a movement. And mm -hmm. sometimes people start an event mm -hmm. and an event starts really, really, really big, mm -hmm. right? But what happens? It eventually fizzles down yes, and you're yeah. left with one or two people yes, who sir. don't care. You got two people cleaning up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when somebody starts a movement, it starts small and continues to expand mm -hmm. to the point where other people start to grasp right. and really start to understand the right. mission behind it. So Jaquar, what about your thoughts? Like, what were you thinking as you were hearing Cheyenne uh, Webb Kreisberg speak? So I just put myself in her shoes. Like yeah. I felt so heavy while she was talking mm -hmm. and especially like her being seven to know that when I was seven years old, I was doing something a kid would do like a normal kid, probably <laughs> yeah. at a summer camp or something. And to know that she was, 
she was a part of history and not even mm. knowing how important like her sacrifice did for, oh, it's the flies. <laughs> how important like her sacrifice caused like us yeah. nowadays to be able to live so freely, although it's still so much work to do, but yeah. it just makes me appreciative of where I am now. Yeah. And just when she was mentioning how like she, in her final moments with her realizing that um, Dr. King died, mm. how she was, how she could recall that same exact day. I just felt myself getting so right. tense. Like I would look at the people next to me. Yeah. We all just, we all just, uh. in our feelings, it was just, I put myself in her shoes and I felt the burden. Like I was able to feel her burden and mm -hmm. I was just happy I wasn't alone in that moment. Like I feel like we were all together, mm -hmm. comforting each other, hurting together all weekend. Mm -hmm. Like it was, yeah. 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 I mean, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say the county commissioner, when the county commissioner mm -hmm. came up and spoke, it was just like, he said something that really stood out to me in, in the state of Alabama. We saw it when we went down to Selma, how, how the uh, development of Selma was just, just so low. It still looks like yeah. 1965 there. Yeah. And so he said, uh, he said we're looking for uh, equality as well as economic equality. Mm. So I mean that that was that was a, that was a good one because I mean it's, it's a lot of Selmas in the world. Say that. Tell it's me about it. A lot of Selmas in, in America that that a lot of people don't speak about hmm. and don't know about. But I mean the majority the majority of of America are Selmas. Hmm. So hmm. I mean I I feel like that 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 that, that stood out to me a lot. The, the economic change as well as the change of integration and people coming together and uni uh, unifying, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Your scenery is what, what, what will really change your mindset. I like how you mentioned like there's so many symbols in the world mm -hmm. and just like there's so many symbols, I feel like there's so many like historic leaders that we heard from, mm -hmm. yeah. we could put ourselves in their shoes. Like it's so much work to be done in this world. And it's like, it could start with us. Yeah. Not it can, it's gonna start with us. Right. Like you from Atlanta, I'm from Miami. All that we learned. So we could even make a difference here in Tallahassee with our teams, Definitely. but we could take it back home and make a difference with our community. Show little kids that just because they little, you got a voice, you're right. very yeah. important. Yeah. Right. You are here in this world for a reason. Like. Exactly. It made me change. It changed a whole different perspective in my head about Facts. everything. Facts. Yeah. yeah, really opened up. Yeah, everyone's mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And I yes. think you know, I remember um, Big Ten Commissioner Warren. He was he was speaking about it, mm -hmm. man. He was like, "This trip is going to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If you you know, it's going to trigger some things, and it's going to make you feel mm -hmm. things that you may not have ever felt before." Mm -hmm. And I can only think of what was happening in my mind, but I can imagine everyone else is thinking about what we experienced mm -hmm. and what was going to be experienced in the trip. Mm -hmm. And I think about this aspect of racism. I think about this aspect of injustice. I think about the reality that we live in that still today. The segregation, whether, you know, we talked about enslavement when we were uh, walking together through some of the museums mm -hmm. and the reality that though blacks were set free, they were only set free by law, yeah. but mentally and physically, there were no other places that they could go to. So mm -hmm. most of them went back into slavery. Yeah. And I couldn't even imagine that this was only just 60, 70 years ago yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. you know, that yeah. that they were still fighting for these rights. You know, the prohibition of slavery, yes, happened, but this reality that it still exists mm -hmm. in other forms, mm -hmm. whether it come to job suppression mm -hmm. or opportunity suppression, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, it still exists. Yeah. So yes. hearing that and hearing Cheyenne speak and her perspective and getting that and, and looking at my life personally, I thought about the things that we experience normally. Yeah. You yeah. know, these normal things yeah. that we experience. Yeah. yeah. These are normal for us, mm -hmm. but for them, it's not, it wasn't normal. It, it wasn't. was something that they fought for. They fought for the right to be able to vote so that we can go and have that opportunity to do so. And still yet so many people don't take advantage of that. Yeah. You know, our people even too, yes. you know, yes. so it, it hurt me a lot to to not only hear her perspective, but it almost put this onus on me to say, what do we need to do? Mm. So it it helps me to, to think about that next day. The, we we went through that day, you know, there was a lot to process from that, that first, first day. day. <laughs> yeah, That's the walk the up. First That's on the walk up. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Just the first yeah. day. And then going into the next day, what was going through your mind and in, in hearing that individuals, leaders that came before us mm -hmm. marched for five days and 54 miles marched. Some only came with a toothbrush, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, didn't only came with a suitcase. 
maybe didn't even bring that mm -hmm. the shirts on their back mm -hmm. they marched for this long and then going up into the bridge. What in the span of five days. In the span of five days. In the span of five days. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it, it, it was, it was life changing <laughs> because you, you, yeah. you only see, you only see um, Bloody Sunday publicized during Black History Month, mm. um, national TV. When they show the event, they only show Bloody Sunday. So the, the learning, uh, learning curve for me was when they taught us about the, it, it took eight days to, to, get that trip even off the ground. Wow. It took eight days. In, in the span of eight days, three people died. Um, Bloody Sunday had occurred. And, and all of those things, all of those things, throughout all of those things, they still fought to get the trip off the ground. And on the eighth day, they prevailed. You know what I'm saying? They, mm. took, their, they took their walking. So that that taught me a lot. Like I, I, I had never heard of the, uh, the trip from Selma to Montgomery. I, I always yeah. thought of the trip being just bloody Sunday. Yeah, Selma. So, I never. <laughs> so that was that. That was an eye opener to me. Yeah. That that we if I didn't know it and a lot I know a lot of kids don't know that. So yeah. That history has to be taught mm. back to the back to the back to the original statement that the history has to be taught. So true, and mm -hmm. the truth of that history has to be taught. The truth well, of too, that history you know, has and, to be and certain areas of history that mm -hmm. are not omitted. Mm -hmm. Jacoria, thinking about all this, you know, we're we're in the bus and mm -hmm. thinking about this reality that though we are driving for two hours on a bus to Selma, mm -hmm. there were in, there were people who walked in in the heat. It was, you know, not comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. People were saying things, I'm sure, shouting, we should stop, we should go somewhere else, we mm -hmm. shouldn't do this. I'm sure many people had doubts and things like that, mm -hmm. but for these five days for these 54 miles we we got a chance to just drive you mm -hmm. know and we drove to first baptist church and 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 got a chance to experience just some of the individuals that were involved and hear their perspectives but what was going through your mind and what were you feeling in your heart as we were riding you know the opportunity to and privilege to be able to ride there and think about what was happening during that time it was honestly so eye-opening to know all this happened in like a lifetime mm. to know that i'm really looking at someone tell me their experience like in front like literally in front of me telling me the experience of like firsthand moments they had with rosa parks and martin luther king and john lewis like mm. i just was taking in everything they were saying like it's nothing they didn't say to me that i didn't process mm -hmm. right. i wanted to make sure i heard them very clearly like to know that they really were fighting they really were fighting like i really it made me I had a moment on the bus where i just was i wasn't sitting next to nobody i just was to myself just processing everything that they were saying. Like people would come to me, they were like, you okay? I said, I'm okay, I'm just having a moment. Like I just was thinking about everything. Yeah. And to know that we are living their prayers, mm -hmm. we are living their prayers. Like in the documentary, you would really see them on their knees praying to God. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know what they were praying for. God know their conversation, but they were, they were literally praying for freedom just to be respected, mm -hmm. just to be able to march, mm -hmm. just to have their voices heard, to be able to vote and to know that Today, it's still some people who don't be appreciative or even taking for granted the right to vote. Mm -hmm. That shows that we have so much to do. Right we have vote. so much to do. Yeah. yeah, we have so much to do. How did it, how did it feel once we got to hear some of those perspectives in the church and we're marching together? Everyone is collaborating. You know, we've got student athletes, administrators, commissioners. Um, mayor, mm. you, know, you name it, who was marching with us. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're walking together, everyone's unified, we're singing, mm -hmm. um, we're chanting. And then we get to the front of the bridge. What did you feel when you got to the front of the bridge? The Edmund Pettus Bridge. Man. It was from, from, from the beginning. Mm. When, when we pulled into the, when we pulled into Selma, mm. it was just something in the air. It was almost like you could cut the air, and it was, it was thick. Yeah, very thick. The yeah. tension in the air was very thick. Mm -hmm. So, walking through it and getting right back to the bridge at the end of our journey, it was just as if we, we it started all over. The tension, you could feel it. Like you could feel the thickness in the air, the thickness of the tension in the air. And so, I mean, I just felt like I was doing something, honoring my ancestors, mm. honoring. Yeah honoring those who came before us. Mm. That's I mean, paying homage to members like Martin Luther King, John Lewis, yeah. uh, the young lady. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who, who, who was the youngest was the youngest member on the journey. So right, right. I mean it was 
For me, it was so unreal. Like I remember going to Google and I searched up like the Edmund Pettus Bridge and it's this photo of like Martin Luther King and a couple other um, leaders. Mm -hmm. Like you see the sign in front of them and I put that picture up against the one that I took and I'm like, what? Okay. I'm literally like, they were right here over 50 years ago. And I remember mm -hmm. telling one of the, um, the track girls from Louisville, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, you standing right there where some historic leaders was. Uh, and she was like, I, I can't believe it. Like, it just was a moment and it, it brought about the community. Mm -hmm. Like all weekend, I kept hearing that word community mm -hmm. and I realized the importance of putting the word unity back in community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah. I think what ACC, Pac-12 and the Big Ten, I think what the goal they tried to accomplish, I think it definitely was met. Mm -hmm. It definitely was met. Like it brought together all of us, mm -hmm. even the, the administrators, <laughs> not even just student athletes. Like we yeah. bonded with the administrators from different races and different cultures mm -hmm. and yeah. different schools. Mm -hmm from different walks of life, like it brought us together. Yeah, it was a, it was like a reflection of the past. Yeah. You know, where you were able to be unified, those that were of different colors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of different uh, ethnicities, mm -hmm. of different status, whatever it may have been, mm -hmm. they marched with a purpose and didn't allow their differences to divide them. Yeah. And being able to have that opportunity to do that again, mm -hmm. I can definitely relate in a sense of like, it was almost like, it was almost as if you were just like, you felt like you were reliving it. Yeah. It was like, man, we get the opportunity to do this. Yeah. So there was this honor that was there, you know, where, yeah. you know, we, it was an honorable opportunity. It was a privilege to be able to walk in the same steps where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. walked, you know, where Rosa Parks walked, where, you, like you mentioned, John Lewis, you know, stood right there where we got a chance to stand as well too and go over that. And then being able to cross together I just feel like there was so much significance in that, you know, like it almost felt freeing, although like we started in the bridge, mm -hmm. it was a little rough, but as we got to like go over into the middle, a, it felt like you, yeah, like a relief, a like, relief. Yeah, yeah, and you know, granted, like we're, we were marching as representation mm -hmm. to be able to be unified. We didn't have the opposition mm -hmm. of policemen that met us. They, they didn't meet us at the middle saying, you know, you can't do this. Fact. Fact. <laughs> you know, we didn't have no governor saying y'all can't march, you mm -hmm. know, or turning us around or tear gas in our eyes or anything like that. I can't even imagine I can't. going through that. And, and, and piggybacking off of what, uh, what the, the speaker at the church said, Ooh, yeah. she said, she said that um, it's people that died for the right to vote. And you have a lot of the youth today saying that the importance of voting is, is it's not important. Mm. You had somebody die, they, they killed so that you couldn't vote. I mean, we, we, we have to, we have to go vote. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Our, our, our ancestors fought for that. You know what I'm saying? They taught us that. They showed us that. Yeah. Yeah. So as we were going, y'all, we, we got the chance to cross this bridge. Mm -hmm. We got a chance to do it together mm -hmm. and had an opportunity to visit various museums and hear from other speakers as well, too. So. I'm going to jump straight to the Equal Justice Initiative. That's the last one? <laughs> That's the last Whoa, one. Whoa, <laughs> that, that one did it for I'm me. Jumping, I'm jumping there. <laughs> that one did it. I wow. know that that was the most impactful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even, like, granted, we visited some other good museums, mm -hmm. but I know that one right there yep. was, was hit. So... What's the man name again? Who even? What was his name? Do you remember? Brian Stevenson. Brian Stevenson. Stevenson. Oh, that's a that's a powerful man. Hey, that he, man got some gifts. That man got some gifts. What? And then for yeah, us Brian. to even be able to speak to, like, not speak to him, but for mm. us to hear from him at the end. To be able to hear from him, man. Story, like it was just, it was. It was yeah. That weekend did it. That weekend did it. Definitely. Yeah. I definitely did not come back the person I went as. Like. Mm. Definitely, Brian Stevens just he he he, he topped it off with uh, uh, just speaking on, on on the prison system in America mm. and yeah. how how equivalent it is to slavery. Yeah, back then. I mean, I mean, but like he said something as well as America has to look some of its its uncomfortable secrets in his face. Yeah, I mean, these topics are uncomfortable topics, but I mean, very it is, it is our history. Mm. It is the history of this country. Yeah. I mean, it's not just it's not just black or white history. It's the history that yeah. comes with the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has to be spoken about. It has to be. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't know your history, your history will repeat itself. Mm -hmm. That's facts. I mean, that though, though, that's a true statement. Right. Truly. So. Right. I think you speak to the reality of the the state of our nation mm -hmm. and the reality that we have to accept it in totality mm -hmm. and what it is and who we are and um, what it means mm -hmm. 
to to live in the society, what it means to um, have opportunity and what it looks like across all race and ethnicity, but in understanding um, this specific context, how do we move forward? And I think about as we're going through the museum, man, the Equal Justice Initiative by Brian Stevenson, mm -hmm. um, author of Just Mercy, mm -hmm. um, also has the film Just Mercy, man. That, that initially when I stepped into the museum, when I, when I what was going through my mind, this fact of like, we're seeing this water, mm -hmm. you know, this design of water as if we were in the slave ship going mm -hmm. through. And then immediately we're met with the heads of slaves, popping out chains, the you know, popping out of the ground mm -hmm. and just various figures of suppression and oppression and slavery. And mm -hmm. I just, at that moment, I couldn't even speak. Mm -hmm. You know, there was another student athlete that I was walking with at the time. And when she got to that part, she, kind of she told me, yeah. I don't want to go forward anymore. Yeah. I don't, I want to turn around. Yeah. I told her, you can if you'd like to, but if you want, I'll walk with you. Mm -hmm. So we walked together. We got a chance to actually walk. And as we were walking through the museum, walking past the lynching area, there was a there was mm. an area of those that had been lynched mm -hmm. and the dirt had been collected from each of the sites where they were lynched yeah. to see how many bottles, you know, that's not even, that's not even an accurate account. Come on. That's like um, a, a microcosm a of handful. the reality of how many were actually lynched, Fact. how many people were lynched. And then, right. um, and going through in the phone booths, there were the area where you could pick up the phone booth and it's speak to those who had prisons. been incarcer mm -hmm. incarcerated and hear their stories. Mm -hmm. You know, the reality of walking past each jail cell yeah. and seeing the faces of slaves, of children yeah. yes. who had been adultified, yeah. you know, like those really hit. And I'm just curious about your experience as you were walking through that museum, what were you feeling? It was silence for a moment, mm -hmm. you know, at, at one point too. Mm -hmm. And just just, just to piggyback off of, off of the prison, uh, the prison system of America, it's, mm. just, it's just, I mean, it's, it's outrageous. He said, uh, Brian Stevens told us the numbers of of, of incarcerated African American men is at four at, at four million. Four million men. Those numbers are just outrageous numbers. Mm. And so, I mean, it, it, it's it's oh, it, if what if we could bundle up the whole uh, all of America and take them to Selma, and just take them to the, to to all the the museums with them. Mm. It will. I mean, it will. It will help America a lot. Yeah. It will really. It will really open the eyes of, of the youth of America. Those are the. Uh, those are the next leaders, the next presidents, the next government officials, yeah. right. next senators. I mean, so if we can get, if if the youth can see that while they're young, I mean, you know what I'm saying? America's in good hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Gloria, what about you? So to touch back on the silent, it was very silent, but the silence was so loud. Mm. It was so loud. Mm -hmm. Like me reading everything, it was just causing me to get so heavy. And I'm proud of myself for not even crying in there because I'm, I'm such an empath and mm -hmm. just like l learning about everything, knowing about the test, learning about the test that they had to take mm -hmm. in order to be to vote to be to get the right to vote or not mm -hmm. and imagine all those black people who didn't pass because the questions were mm. ridiculous the, the questions jelly the jelly bean questions <laughs> how, jelly how many jelly beans are in this how bottle? i'm gonna I'm like, know how am i gonna know how many subs are on a bar so come on man so to know that that's something that they had to experience it was just like it was so heartbreaking so i remember just I just needed some fresh air. So I remember going up to the security. I was like, hey, sir, are you a black man? How is it working here? I just wanted, I just needed to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how is it working here? And to touch back on to something you said when he, you was like, you know, we learn our history. Mm -hmm. A lot of people could run from it. A lot of people don't want to learn about it. And so they out here living lost. They don't know mm -hmm. who they are or where they come from. Yeah. So he was just like, you know, he works here. This is his reality. He faced it every day. He's learning about it. Therefore, so when he leave there, he could go out in the world and make a difference. Right. He could live better. He mm -hmm. could treat people right. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. could be the difference that he want to see in this world. So that was that was such a touching conversation I had with him. And I remember I was just like, wow, like you see this every day. And yeah. I know you experience everybody, like all the different emotions we all face. Like you, you're seeing that, you're seeing that in all of us. And he was just telling us how like proud that he was to see people, to see college kids, like mm -hmm. young college kids, because to, to know like back then it was students mm -hmm. making a difference. It was students doing the marches. Yes. It was students holding the meetings to to go out there and make a right. difference. And right. 
to know that it's a bunch of student athletes today yeah. in 2022 mm -hmm. joining together coming to learn about yes yeah, so coming to learn about all of this like shoot it kind of make us not equal but you know we're, we're trying to follow that path like the young student leaders were back then Fact. trying to make a difference in this Fact. world trying yeah. to be somebody definitely so definitely and that's what i mean i mean it shows that's what the world needs right now yeah we, we, we need that change I mean, yeah a lot of the a lot of the officials and a lot of the government officials that are in office are right of that era mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so they carry the mindset of the era that previously oppressed us mm -hmm. the new generation has to change that narrative we are black history. We are black history. Yeah. We are living history. Right. So right. we got to be the change we want to see. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And we will. <laughs> we we will. Be. We are. We are. Yeah. We are. <laughs> got this. Thinking about as we were ending the trip, y'all, uh, would you say that there were any challenging emotions, anything reflecting, reflections that you had that were you just kind of sat with you as you were going? Um, that you experienced? Uh, Brian Stevens, Brian Stevens spoke. Uh, he spoke about uh, the government coming up with this idea of the new super kid. And so mm. that's uh, a kid being a kid, but their mental, uh, they, they've grown faster mentally. So right. a lot of their uh, actions are of an adult. Mm. So they be, they're, they're charged as an adult. So he spoke of a situation where a kid had, had been imprisoned and the kid didn't understand the repercussions of his actions. He mm. didn't understand what he had did. Yeah. He had never been in trouble. He had never done anything wrong. He thought he was protecting his mother. And the kid was in prison less than three days and was he, he was in prison with adults. He gave the, he gave the size, gave the age. Uh, he said, man, in, the, in those three days he was he was abused, he was uh, sexually assaulted, and he was he was junk. And so just just to hear that story and just to hear a story like that, there just to hear that those there are stories like that here in America, and just understanding we have to I mean, progress has to come. Yeah. When 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 those type of stories are are brought to surface, you know what I mean? A kid should not what a kid should not be in prison with an adult. A kid shouldn't be imprisoned at all. Mm. A, a, a child, and so a baby, a baby, fresh, fresh from his mom's lawn. And so, just just hearing that story, it it, it, it almost brought me truly almost brought me to tears. Like, I mean, man, you know, I, I can't believe we didn't cry. I, I, <laughs> it was so many moments I could have been a cry, mm -hmm. but I don't, I think I was I don't know what it was. It it just I couldn't cry. It wasn't a moment to cry. Mm -hmm. It was a moment to learn about to it, strong. to be strong. Mm -hmm. It was a moment to learn about it and to be strong. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can relate. There was a moment where <laughs> I wanted to cry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I wanted to cry, but my, my body and the reality of everything that I know I've experienced wouldn't let me. Mm -hmm. It was a sense of, I wanted to cry, but man, I don't even deserve to cry. I don't deserve to cry. <laughs> Like they I wanted to, they don't but deserve I, my tears. like I don't like it that deserve mm -hmm. my tears. Mm -hmm. But the, the the folks that and shoulders that we stand on mm -hmm. that we came before us mm -hmm. experienced so much worse. Right. Tamisha kept saying he was like, man, these are first world problems. The world, the, the fact that yeah. you have to think about having to get gas is a first world problem. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I gotta get gas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta wake up and go to school. Mm -hmm. Those are first world problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those aren't real problems. Right. <laughs> So he kept saying that, and it just kept ringing through my mind. I was like, man, I'm like, dang, like, yeah. those are first world problems. <laughs> we, we don't know the half right. of the struggle of mm -hmm. what they experienced. But the fact that we get to still live, we get to walk mm -hmm. and have the opportunities that they only dreamed for mm -hmm. and wanted and desired for us. Yes. Like you said, we are their prayers. Their prayers. We are their living prayers yes. and get an opportunity to walk in that. So it what, made me definitely do some self reflection and made me more appreciative even more though grateful. i already was uh -huh. more grateful of mm -hmm. even being able to catch a flight and come back to florida state and finish my semester off strong mm -hmm. and prepare for the upcoming track season mm -hmm. it just made me look at everything differently mm -hmm. it made me more grounded and knowing that i'm living this moment i'm a first generation of college student mm -hmm. from miami like i'm i'm doing this yeah. i'm doing this where people pray and wish they could where people 
it's like an opportunity of a lifetime. And, and just understand, I, I really, on, on this journey, I really understood what the king meant about that mountaintop. Mm -hmm. And just understanding that mountaintop is a, it's an everlasting mountaintop. It's a non, it's a non-stop climb. Yeah. And so, as a as a country, we, as a country, we will learn that, and we are going to learn that. And I, I have to be a, uh, I have to be a torch carrier of that movement. Mm. Just, I feel like that is, that is my, uh, that is my purpose. I have to be with the platform I have and what God has blessed me with, and just just understanding what. What, what those people went through as well as I mean, my our, our grandparents yeah <laughs> our great grandparents family members of ours you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying yeah. we're, we're carrying the torch for them mm -hmm. and so I mean just just understanding that throughout that trip I, it really settled with me and resonated with me why I'm here in college why I'm on this journey to the NFL why I'm on this journey to better the youth yeah so yeah I mean I, I, I that that stuff is what makes me come back and work so hard. This is, people kept asking me, they was like, was this one of the best weekends you ever had? Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm just the type of person, I feel like every day I'm alive, I'm, that's a great day for me. So, but this was definitely a weekend and experience I'm moment. never, ever oh, gonna forget, mm -hmm. like, that's, ever. Met friends, like, met what? Man, what, what? My roommate, I mean, I was We, locked <laughs> in, man. we are locked in My roommate, ACC. what? Across, we needed that. So yeah. now if we had track meets or football games, you're gonna mm -hmm. be seeing people, mm -hmm. just any ACC event, like, those are people that we gonna know now. Mm -hmm. right. We right. spent a weekend with, we share a very vulnerable moment with yes. them, yes. like, Make some friends. Yeah, that connection is everlasting. Yes. And not, you know, going to be able to watch that, them. You can't reenact that. No, mm -hmm. you can't. That's now we can support them whenever they yeah. plan on, all the time. Right. I don't know about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> you can support them people. Yeah, they know it's love. Yeah. yeah. So y'all, are y'all, so final thoughts. Um, what do we need to do as an, an athletics department? Uh. First and foremost, this this video needs to be pushed. I mean, I'm going to straight up put it out there. This video needs to be publicized and pushed on the main page of Florida State, so that so that people know that we are awake here. As student athletes, we're not in the dark. Mm. As student athletes, we understand what's going on in our community. As student athletes, we can make a difference in our community. Mm. And so, the the only way that difference can be made is if we have the knowledge. The knowledge comes from the videos, the pushing of these uh, these movements, these ACC Unity movements. Mm. This has to be a publicized video. That's the first thing the university has to do. So. Well said. <laughs> well said. Anything, Jacory, on your um, end? Honestly, just support us. Yeah. yeah. Just support us. Okay. With the push in, with hearing our stories, mm -hmm. with with we have to use our voice but support us with that mm -hmm. give us a platform and stand by us stand by us stand by stand us. us stand with us uh -huh. not stand by stand, stand with, with us. <laughs> stand with stand us with for us. sure so well y'all appreciate y'all looking forward to the future trips that we have together yes, and the different experiences that we can do to bring about awareness and knowledge in our department into tallahassee as a whole yeah. yes right. thank you, thank you.